Cole woke with his cell phone blaring in his ears. He snatched it from his nightstand and read the screen. Sally Moore, 3.22 a.m. Calls this time of the morning usually meant bad news. Hey, Sally, what's going on? Nathan's had a heart attack. He snapped on the lamp. Is he okay? She sobbed quietly. He's dead. Boys and I said our final goodbyes at the hospital. We just got back a little while ago. I'll be there in a few minutes. No, please. Your coming isn't a good idea. I wanted you to hear it from me before the media announces it. Alarm zipped to the forefront. What happened? I found him at home on the floor of his office. Suspected a heart attack, called 911, and tried to revive him. But he was already gone. How are the boys taking it? In their own way. Jack's quiet and Lance is verbal. None of you should face this without support. Don't you have a girlfriend to call? Being alone is the best way to handle Nathan's death. My dad and stepmom will be here before noon. They'll help make necessary arrangements. Something was wrong. What aren't you telling me? She released a ragged breath. When I found him, his phone was inches from his fingers. After calling 911, I checked it and saw his last conversation was with Jacob Farr, his attorney. I returned the call and learned Nathan feared for his life. Because of threats from someone, the attorney suggested foul play. He contacted the police and they're here now. Your attorney's actions are appropriate. Any threats need to be investigated. Considering Nathan's high-profile position in the oil and gas industry, the recent bombing at the Texas City site, and the controversy over the court case, law enforcement must be involved. Did Mr. Farr indicate a suspect? I, I didn't think to ask. Where are the officers? In the foyer. I think they're on the phone. Where are you? The kitchen. The hesitancy in her voice pushed him forward. I don't understand why you want to endure this alone. Are the boys listening? They're upstairs. Her voice broke. Tonight, Nathan said he planned to file for divorce in the morning. I have no idea if he told his attorney, but... Cole inwardly groaned. Sally, it doesn't even sound like him. He was like a stranger, hurling horrible insults at us. She drew in a ragged breath, no doubt for control. When he stormed out of the dining room, I told the boys their dad wasn't himself. I told them I loved Nathan, and he loved us. I'm so sorry. You've been a wonderful friend, but it's better you keep your distance. I'll call later. She disconnected the call. Nathan wanted a divorce? And now he was dead? Possibly a homicide? What kind of madness was this?